everyone, I'm Amanda with Sweet Pieces and welcome to our live video today. Um, I'm just going to wait a few minutes for you guys to pop on. Uh, make sure that everything is tidy that you guys are going to be looking at today. <laughs> just give me a couple minutes here. right hello there oh hi john hi julie i made john do another um last minute run over here because i forgot something <laughs> um so i'm excited what's today is today today's tuesday another another week in quarantine people another week in quarantine this is crazy stuff crazy stuff but i have to tell you i'm very thankful that um I have you guys to hang out with. It's really nice to have to do something. You know, I have to prepare for these videos and we come up with ideas and um, it's it's wonderful knowing that you guys are gonna tune in and, and check out what we have to say. So thank you very, very much. Um, just so you guys know, we're still doing um, curbside pickup at the store. We're open from Tuesdays to Saturdays, 11 to five. You can basically call in your order. You can place your order online. Um, and you can basically come and pick it up. We need probably 30 to 60 minutes just to wrap it up for you. And then you can head over and get whatever it is that you need. So besides all of our amazing DIY products and home decor and furniture from Sweet Pieces, we are also um, doing curbside pickup for all of our vendors goods as well. So that's all the shop stuff. Um, vintage furniture, home decor, accessories, all of the goodies that we sell in the store. So if you hop on to any of our previous live videos, the shop tours that we did, you could check those out and you can uh, give us a holler if there's anything that you see that you want. We're also doing virtual vintage sales on Instagram on our Shops at Sweet Pieces Instagram page. So the handle is the shops at SP. Um, so you can definitely hop on over there and we have everything labeled and, and nicely put out for you. So like I said, if you just send us a DM on what you want to purchase on the vintage side, we'll send you an invoice. And then um, once it's paid, it will be packed up and ready for you within an hour or so, as long as it's between 11 and 5, not in the middle of the night, okay? <laughs> um, hi, Billy. Billy's tuning in from Florida. Hope you guys are staying safe down there as well. It's starting to heat up here in New York, which is really nice. This weekend was beautiful, amazing, right? Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm so thankful you guys are here with me. And today I'm going to be talking about organizing and decluttering. So I have a secret. Um, I was a very messy child. Billy can vouch for this. <laughs> um, I was very, very messy and very, very disorganized. I still don't really consider myself a super organized person, although I am starting to kind of become comfortable with the fact that I am pretty organized, um, but it's something that I want to make sure I always work at. So, you know, sometimes we view our weaknesses and we think that they are impossible to overcome. I want you to get that thought out of your head because nothing is impossible. You can do anything you want to do. So if you, I have an inclination to want to be organized. Um, I don't know about you, but I love going to the store. I love seeing storage cabinets. Um, I love looking through containers and um, figuring out different ways to organize things. But like I said, I am by nature not an organized person so I said you know what this is something that I have to overcome and that I have to do so I started I just started to figure out how to organize things how do I get you know everything in order so it's kind of like a habit you have to really get into the habit of it and I will tell you one thing that I have not overcome and figure out how to be organized with is my papers does anybody else have a problem papers right here I'm a paper 
fanatic. I hate, first of all, I hate paper, but I just feel like it's just constantly in my life. So I, I said, I think I said in 2019 that I was going to tackle paper. Um, I've tackled it big time, but I still don't feel like I have a really good system for in and out. So if you guys have a good system, please clue me in because I want to, I want to hear all about it. Um, so anyway, you have to kind of make things a habit and, and it takes about 21 days to form a habit, right? So you have to make sure that you're consistent doing the whole organization thing for at least 21 days until it becomes a habit. Um, so Julie's raising her hand there. Julie just signed on her house yesterday. Congratulations, new homeowner. And I bet she's going to need a ton of these organizing tips. So girl, I'm there with you. If you need help organizing, I got your back. So first of all, you have to make sure th this is so let's talk about KonMari. So KonMari, I love KonMari. Who knows KonMari? Um, KonMari was created by a woman named Marie Kondo, who is this tiny little Japanese lady who is just so adorable to watch. And basically, she came up with this concept of organizing and decluttering by what brings you joy. So, you know, and this is so true. And I, like, you know everything happens for a reason. So I see these things in my life and like, then they all just kind of come together. So for a long time, I, I thought to myself, you know, what? I'm only going to bring things into my life that spark joy. Like for instance, with our vintage furniture, I said to John at one point in time, we are not going to bring anything into the store that I don't love. If I don't love the piece of furniture, then we're not buying it. That's just the way it's going to go. And it, I, it, it kind of shifted my focus because when I first started the, in the business, People were throwing furniture at me. Everybody was getting rid of something, right? And they want to give you everything. How many of you are in that situation? That you are, a, you're painting furniture for fun and then everybody wants to dump your, their furniture on you. <laughs> so in the beginning, I was taking everything and I had so much excessive crap that didn't matter to me. And I just felt like I was so overwhelmed by it. So I made a decision. We're only going to bring things into the store that we love. Even if they're crazy, um, we're going to, we're only going to bring things that we love. So you kind of have to translate that to the way that you organize as well, because there's no point in organizing something if it doesn't spark joy for you. So if you, you know, there's a skirt, I'll show you it in my closet that I don't know. Am I ever going to wear it again? I'm not really sure. But every time I go into my closet, it sparks joy for me. So I'm not going to get rid of it. It doesn't mean I'm a hoarder. Okay, people. Some people out there call me a hoarder. <laughs> doesn't mean I'm a hoarder. It. I have really selectively cut down on the things that I keep in my life. But I'm bringing, I'm keeping the things in my life that truly spark joy for me. So that's the first thing. You have to make sure that everything that's in your life that you're going to organize is something that sparks joy for you. And, you know, it's like when I first started reading about this with Kamar, it's it sounds like kind of cheesy. But honestly, this is, you know, how she does it. So let's flip you around here. So this is my, this is my wardrobe cabinet here. And I, 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 I'll tell you a story. This cabinet here, I got it for free. Someone wanted to throw it at me. This was a good one that someone wanted to throw at me and I was I was lovingly taking it. Um, I think my husband and John wanted to kill me because they had to actually carry it and strap it down and, and, and all that good stuff. But it, organized, it organizes everything. It has space for everything. So, you know, when you pull out a piece of clothing um, and the way that Kamari says that you should do it is that you should pull out all of your clothing and put it, dump it into a giant pile on the bed and you, you're going to go through each item. So you would hold this item in your hand and just think about the feelings that it brings you. And it's, people are like, how do you, how do you know? How do you know the feelings that it brings you? Well, it's, it's how you associate with it. So like you think of a time when you were wearing these pants and did you feel good in them? What was the evening like? What was the day like? And everything in your life does truly spark an emotion. We don't always think of it that way, but that is truly how it is. So, you know, like, I love these pants. I feel so good in these pants. These pants are like, I feel like I'm a boss lady. I feel good. So they ain't going anywhere. They're in my closet because they spark joy for me. So that's really what you have to do when you're deciding what is going to stay in your life. And it has to truly be the things that spark joy for you. And if it doesn't spark joy for you, get rid of it. Even if you feel like, well, it's something I have to keep because of this reason or that reason, we don't have to do anything. We really don't. And when once we let ourselves off the hook for that and say that we don't have to do this, it's pretty empowering. Um, 
Marie Kondo has a chapter in her book about how do you let go of things that let's say someone has given you um, and it does it just you know you're holding on to it just to hold on to it and there's really just no reason to I mean that person gave it to you as um, a token of love or appreciation but they certainly didn't want you to feel burdened by it right so if you thank it for its service and I know this sounds so cheesy but it's so true and it really does feel good to say thank you so much this has been in my life it's a wonderful thing and then donate it to somebody else who might need it um it's a really wonderful feeling so take take that in mind you know here's another thing that I kept for forever was just boxes and boxes of cards thank you cards birthday cards Christmas cards I mean, cards up the wazoo and, and it's like you feel bad getting rid of them. So when I started on this KonMari journey, that was one of the things that I did was I actually I sat and went through these boxes and this was a little bit painstaking because it, it is kind of sad to like let go of those things. But what was really nice was I went through every single card. I reread them. I felt the joy. I felt the thankfulness that whoever was writing it to me. And then I let it go. Um, and. I actually kept some, so I have a I have a nice size box downstairs of special cards, things for like really special occasions from special people that I feel like I want to have them in my life. I want my daughter to be able to read them someday, and um, you know Johnny and I have a box of cards that we've given each other. So you, I'm not saying that you have to get rid of everything, and that's one of the things that I love about Marie Kondo is that she's not saying to just get rid of everything. She's saying only keep the things that truly spark joy for you and then give yourself permission to let go of the rest of it. So that's been a very, very empowering um, journey for me with KonMari is really learning that I don't necessarily have to keep everything. I can let some of it go. So um, anyway, so that's that. So, so let me talk to you a little bit about how I love to organize. So this is really important. I'm a very logical person, so I need to like really understand everything. So when I first started learning about learning about Marie Kondo, she talks about like that you should organize everything in like a filing system. So when you go into a filing cabinet, you see all of the files and they're stacked and you can clearly see all of the files, right? Um, so the way that you organize should be exactly the same way that when you glance at something, you can see everything. Okay. So this is, um, like organized in a filing system. So I can actually see all my pants. I'm not looking down at them. You know, like usually when I, before KonMari, the way that I used to put my clothes in the drawer was, um, by, I would stack them this way right and then you look in the drawer and all you see is this one white shirt and you can't see everything else so then you start pulling everything up and then everything gets all disorganized so the way Marie Kondo says to organize it is like a filing cabinet so that you can actually see everything so basically her concept and I mean how amazing is this like I can open this and I can literally see every single t-shirt that I own so it, it's very easy for me to now make a choice I'm not wrestling with my entire draw and then slamming it shut because everything is falling out of it um and i'm in a hurry it's just it's very very easy to keep this organized and i i'm being 100 percent honest i didn't touch this today even for this video this is how my clothes are all of the time and like i said people i am not an organized person i would not say that well i guess now i'm an organized person but i wouldn't say that i had a natural tendency toward that whatsoever um you know, here's another one. Okay, this is, and, and I organize it this way. So I have all my tank tops up here. Then I have my t-shirts. And then this is some t-shirts left over and then long sleeve shirts. Um, I didn't have a place for my scarves. So when I got done organizing my closet, I kind of, so where am I gonna put these? And I had this extra space in here. So now these are all my scarves and these are, you know, stacked the same way. So the way that Kamari is explaining to you how to fold everything, is basically that you want to keep in mind whatever area you're working in so like for instance this um this draw is what i'm working in um the height of this draw so the height of this draw like let's say is about that high right so i want to make my clothes into the shape of a square or a rectangle that's about that high so 
you know, I kind of just figured that out. So if I have my shirt here, let me, let me do this for you. Let me back you up a little bit and show you how I'm going to do this. This was the part I loved, like figuring out how to fold everything and make everything look really perfect. Um, not really perfect, but <laughs> perfect enough that I could open the drawer and see everything very, very easily. So here's my shirt, right? And I'm just going to fold the arms in. Okay. I'm then going to lay it down and I'm going to pull you closer so you can really see this. Okay. And now I'm going to fold this in half. Okay. But I only want this to be about that high. So I'm going to fold it in half again. And then there's my little rectangle. And then I could just shove it in here. And there it is. Easy peasy. And then the same thing with my scarves. So um, this scarf here is, you know, fringy and furry. And I had to figure out how to get it into a rectangle. So this one I folded into thirds. And then I folded it in half. And then it fits nicely in there. And snug it in. And, you know, once you... Once you really start doing this um it's so easy it's so easy to maintain it which is what I absolutely love because um I, I've had this my closet like this for I don't know it's got to be a couple of years now and I don't even if it starts to get a little bit messy like if I take four or five outfits out it's just very very easy for me to maintain it and put it back in and the other thing is that I I try to think um I don't know, my brain kind of works that way. Like I look at a space and I figure out what can fit into it. And then I figure out a container that can kind of fit into it. So for instance, like I found these containers at Ikea and these are just, they're little boxes that zipper up and they just so happen to fit perfectly into the space. I do a lot of measuring. Um, math is really important in my life. <laughs> I do a lot of measuring and it sounds silly, but measure your spaces. You know, if you have uh, a kitchen draw, measure the draw. Draw, make a little diagram, measure it out. And when you go to the store, bring a measuring tape with you and then measure the containers. There's nothing worse than buying a container, bringing it home, and then it doesn't fit in the draw. Or it's, it, you could have fit more if you, you know, purchase another one or purchase one that was a different size. So, you don't be, you know, once you get it organized, it's organized and you don't have to do it again. So it's worth it to spend a little bit of time to, to do that. Um, this is another one of those little containers and these are my leggings and I just take them and I just roll them up and I stick them in here. So this, when I need a pair of leggings, I just pull this out and I look and I can see every single pair of leggings that I own. <laughs> and then it just slides right back into the closet. So it's very, very easy to keep track of those things. Um, oh, well, here's another thing that, uh, my makeup. So I do my makeup standing here at the mirrors every day. And, um, at one point in time I had my makeup in the bathroom and then I would pull it out of the bathroom and do it in front of here. And then I would put it back into the bathroom. And I thought that was, that's kind of silly. So I decided to store it in here. So my little trays, by the way, I love Mary Kay. Who is a Mary Kay girl? I've been a Mary Kay girl for, I don't know, 15 years or so. I used to be a consultant. That's how I started my whole career journey. Um, and I love it to this day. I don't really sell it anymore, but I use all of the products. They're absolutely amazing. Take it from me. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so I have my little trays in here, my little eyeshadow trays and blush trays. And I just bought a cute little... Um, like a toothbrush holder. And this is for all my brushes and my eyeliners. So think of, I like to think of containers as completely um, versatile. So even if it's a container that is for toothbrushes, you can use it for anything that you need to stand up. So this little container brings me joy. I love Buffalo Check. I love gray and white and I love gold. So every time I open this cabinet, this little doodad sparks joy for me. So it's all, that's what life is all about. It's all about finding the things that spark joy for you and just surrounding yourself with them. Um, this was another cute little thing. I love little draws. Like who doesn't love little draws? They're just so cute. Um, so these just store like mascara and you know, foundations. Um, and I just, I just throw them back in here and they're, they're always just here for, for me to use. And I don't have to have my stuff all over the place and all out over the sink. You know, it's stored away, it's tucked away. And when I need to use it, I just open up the closet and there it is. 
Um, so definitely think of your storage containers as very versatile. You don't have to use them for what their purpose is for. Um, okay, so let's take a walk into my closet here. And I'm just gonna show you a few things in here that I've kind of organized. Um, so again, I, do, I, I don't really consider myself a super, I'm definitely not just organized by nature. It's something that I've had to work at. Um, this was another, for instance, there's no container here, but this is a shelf and I wanted to be able to see everything that's on the shelf. So this is like all of my capris um, for summer, capris, um, you know, shorter pants. So I can just very easily thumb through here and see everything that's in here, just at a glance. Um, up there in that basket, all the way up top there, I'm not gonna bring it down, I should have before, um, but that wicker basket that's all the way up at the top there, that basket has all of my shorts in it. So when um, winter goes away, which I'm glad it's gonna be going away soon, all of these boots will go into bags that will go up there and then I'll take my shorts box down and that will go right into this area. So it's just, it's a very easy swap for me to switch things out. You have to figure out what works for you. Um, I am not going to sit here and spend a ton of time, um, you know, swapping things out. I want to do it really quick and easy. So I can just very easily plop these bo um, boots into a bag. Uh, I use the bags that are up there. You can see that say boots on them. And I, I just pop that other box down and, and slide it right into place. So I know that that box is going to fit here every year. You know, there's, I don't have to think about it. It just, you know, quickly slides in and out. Um, I do want to personally thank the, the inventor of cup hooks. I don't know. I don't know who that person is. I don't know where they are today, but I am eternally grateful for the person who ever invented cup hooks. <laughs> um, I use cup hooks literally for everything. Um, so this is a board in my closet that I mounted to the wall and then I put all these little cup hooks in them and this is where all my necklaces hang and they're all super organized. So the thought process when I was thinking about how to do that, because I had so much costume jewelry and I love costume jewelry, it sparks joy for me. I didn't want to get rid of all of it. Um, and I truly do wear so much of it. Um, I looked at this space on the wall and I thought, how could I possibly fit, I don't know, 50 or 60 necklaces into that? So at one point I had went out to the store and I bought this, okay? And these are cute and you, I'm a sucker for storage just as much as the next person. Um, but this was not really that versatile for me. If this was 10 inches wider and 20 inches higher, it would have been perfect, but it's not. So it, that's what hung there actually for some time. And it was so low overloaded with necklaces that it was not functional anymore. And I just said, I have to figure out how to make this function better. So sometimes that's kind of like a little bit of a custom option. And that's why I love DIY so much because you can really customize your designs to yourself. You know, everything that we do in, in Sweet Pieces World is really DIY. I mean, this board, I cut this board in my workshop and then I painted it. It was painted with graphite and then I did a pearl plaster wash over it. So even my jewelry <laughs> board has some sort of a decorative element to it. And again, this sparks joy for me. Like I come in here and it's just, it's pretty and it's glittery and it's shimmery and I love it. Um, so you got to do that. You know, you got to take the time to, to do those little projects that are going to spark joy for you. I'm going to flip you guys around here. And this is the other side. And I told you guys this when I did my house tour. Um, but when we, I was designing this closet, I had this space that is behind the door. So here's my door, which I have a shoe organizer hanging from. So this is my door. And then this area right here, it's only eight inches deep and the closet people, they left it off of the plan. And I was like, well, what are you going to do with that wall? And they were like, well, we can't do anything with that wall. I said, oh no, no, no. We are going to put shelving on that wall. So they customized, this is an eight inch deep shelf. And it's perfect for all of my stuff. So I have, you know, nail polishes are in a little container up there. Um, 
I have a couple hat boxes. I have, you know, cute little hats in them. Um, all of my necklaces hang here on dun, 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 cup hooks. Um, so this is a board. I, I, again, I DIY this. I couldn't find anything that was going to be able to display this amount of necklaces. So I just designed it myself. This is, um, a piece of pallet strapping. So this is pallet strapping. I sat on the couch for probably three or four nights and hand screwed in every one of these cup hooks. I marked the board. I figured out how the spacing between them. Again, lots of measuring going on in my life. Um, and then I just put one, two, three screws into the shelf and then hung all my necklaces. And I, it's actually double. So there's one behind here as well. Um, so now everything is displayed very nicely. I probably spent, I don't know, $5 on that project. It was super simple and it's super functional. Here's another one. This is actually a spice rack. So I took this and I, you know, they just so happen to fit on here. They overhang just a little, that's okay. But this holds all my bracelets and I can just very easily see all of my bracelets. Um, this is a ramekin. So can you guys see this? I hope you can see it. You can't, okay. Um, so this is a little ramekin and this has all of those little things that go on the earrings on the backs of your earrings. So I keep them all in this one little container and I know anytime I need an earring back, they're right in there. So again, anything that you touch on a daily basis, if you're, if you're touching something often, if you're using something often, then you need to make sure that you give it a place, you give it a home. Um, that's really the key of organizing because if you store it away and you need to constantly if you, store, if you store it away and you constantly need to take it out, then that's when it has the opportunity to kind of become messy. So you have to create little spaces for each of those types of things. Um, so let's, oh, by the way, so here's that little skirt I was telling you about. There it is. Every time I come in here, it sparks joy for me. I don't know if I'll ever wear it again, but um, that's okay. That's okay, because I come in here and it sparks joy for me. So I'm going to show you um, next my bathroom and some things that I do to stay organized in my bathroom. So I have this vanity, okay, this uh, sink, and it has these fun little drawers. And they have like this cutout in here for, for plumbing. And um, what I have found works really, really well is taking... I mentioned to you that I love taking containers that aren't meant for, you know, storage and you and finding out ways to store them. So I love little boxes. Like how many of us get these cute little boxes for like Christmas? And then what do you do with them? I, I hate throwing them away. So I use them. I use them for my storage. And so this has like my tweezers and my scissors and nail clippers. And that just sits right in here. And every time I open the straw, I see this cute little box. And it sparks joy for me. So again, this is all organized where I can see everything. So it's like that filing system. So I can see everything very clearly. Um, you know, all my lipsticks are in here, like all my additional eyeshadows. Um, you know, I can just very clearly see everything. And the reason is because I'm using these boxes to kind of segregate. So this is another little box and that just kind of fits in here. So. I love, um, I love boxes that, um, they're square, like they're, they're rectangle, they have angles. So that like maximizes your space when you're organizing inside of a drawer or, or anywhere really. I mean, think about like your cabinets and we put round plates in them and we have all this wasted space. So I love square plates. I actually need to get myself a set because they would just stack so much nicer into a cabinet. So when you're thinking about your storage containers, you want to think about, you know, keeping everything square. And that's what these little boxes kind of enable you to do, which is great. Um, so as I was kind of prepping for this, I found this little box that I have in here and it's kind of, um, it's kind of beat up. So this was like, I think this was like a soap that I don't know, maybe it was a stocking stuffer or something, but it's looking a little dingy, a little grungy. So we're going to go downstairs and we're going to wrap this up in some temp paper and we're going to spark even more joy in my life. 
Um, and I'm just noticing here that we, I also want to show you guys this, this little basket, which is not filled with toilet paper right now. Um, you know, we're running low on toilet paper here on Long Island. So, <laughs> so two rolls is actually a lot. <laughs> um, but anyway, this, I didn't have anywhere in the bathroom to store toilet paper. And I thought, oh, let me just throw a basket and hang it on the wall. So think of these things that you have, um, and you don't have to use them the way that they're supposed to be used. This is not supposed to hang on the wall. I literally just took two screws and ran it through, hung it on the wall, and now I can hold my um, toilet paper very easily. So make sure you're thinking about different ways to um, organize your space. So let's, uh, we're going to go downstairs into my lair, <laughs> into my basement that you guys have been following me doing. Oh, you know what? One other thing I want to show you while we're up here. So, um, the other thing that kind of threw me for a loop when I was organizing is, um, my sheets and stuff. So all of my sheets and, all of my pillowcases, you know, how do you store all that stuff? It's kind of a pain. So this closet was actually, um, it just had a bar in it. It just had like a, um, you know, just like a hanging bar in it, in the middle. And I had my, my great friend, John Scarola, who is an amazing handyman. If you need anything done, John is your man and he builds amazing, beautiful furniture. So you definitely need to check out his stuff. Jay Scarola design, check him out on Instagram as well. So anyway, he came over, he built me these shelves. And then I temp papered in here as well. So you guys can kind of see this. So see inside is all temp papered there. Um, so I made shelves because I wasn't using this as a hanging closet, I needed to store things. So now, I, and I went, I measured, brought my measuring tape and I so happened to find a bunch of baskets at um, Michael's and they all kind of fit in here perfectly. And this is how now I store everything. So we have um, my baskets here, and this is, I'll angle you guys down here. These are all of my pillowcases. So again, everything is standing up. I can see everything perfectly. This one's a little bit disheveled. Um, and it's just, it's very easy for me to pick everything out and see everything. And then my sheets are stored exactly the same way. My blankets are stored exactly the same way. Um, so here's my blankets. You can see they're stacked, they're folded. Um, down there, I have all my pillows. So these are, when guests come over, I pull these pillows out and I put cases on them. Everything is just, it has a place. And let me tell you, this, it didn't happen overnight but it's something that um, I took time to really think about it. Um, you know, where am I gonna store this stuff? How am I gonna store it? You know, doing the measuring, all that stuff. Here's another way to use something differently is, um, this is like a shoe holder, but I use it to, to store all of my dish towels. So anytime I need a dish towel, I just come in here and pop it out. Also has some of my pet supplies, so br brushes and shampoos for the doggies and the kitties, which we no longer have. Um, so this, you know, it's just an easy way. I roll them up, I throw them in there, and anytime I need one, I know exactly where they are. So organizing, again, it's a habit, okay? Don't think that it has to be like who you are. Um, it truly can become who you are, but it's something that you have to work at. You can't just expect uh, to be organized without actually working at it. It's kind of like, um, you know, working out. Like, you can't just be fit and look like a fitness model if you don't actually take time to work out. So you got to take time to dedicate to organizing. And I totally left that bin upstairs. <laughs> but that's okay. So I'll show you guys what we were going to do here. Um, so we're in my, my little basement area here, my laundry room. So I'll just show you a, for instance, this was a shoe box. Okay. This was a shoe box and I took my leftover temp paper, which went into the back of my china closet and I just wrapped the box in it. And now it's pretty. Um, I even threw a vinyl on the front of it. I even glued some blings onto it because blings spark joy for me. They bring me joy. So now it's just this cute little container. And by the way, 
everything in it is stored vertically so I can very easily take a look in here and see everything that I have when I'm making a decision about you know using something so those are some of my key tips you know think of your storage containers differently well let me start from the beginning so number one you have to make sure that what you are about to organize sparks joy for you. If it does not bring you joy, get it out of your life. So that's first and foremost. And then secondly, you have to kind of think methodically and logically about how you're going to store things and organize things. You know, take measurements, um, you know, plan things out. How are you gonna do your shelves? You know, how high are they? How wide are they? How deep are they? And then find the storage containers that fit perfectly. And sometimes the storage containers that fit perfectly are might be things that you already have laying around the house. Um, and that's when I like to utilize things like temp paper. Um, so I love using temp paper to, you know, sass up, um, you know, my current storage. So it, it allows me to kind of express my creativity a little bit and it is also sparks some additional joy in my life. Um, so either using a little bit of paint, you know, you can always use a little bit of paint to, to paint your containers. Um, you can use temp paper to, to um, do some fun little, it almost is like contact paper basically. And, and um, it, it's, you know, has a self-adhesive back. So you just peel off the backing and then you just apply it to whatever surface you're gonna apply it to. So this is great for, you can use it on furniture, you can use it on, it's really meant for walls, but then Sweet Pieces got their hands on it and we use it for everything but walls, basically. <laughs> um, for, uh, walls, you can use it for furniture, you can use it for storage containers, you can use it on the insides of drawers. Um, you know, you can really use it for any, you can make it a piece of art, put it in a frame and hang it on the wall. There's lots of different things that you could do um, with, temp paper and so you know thinking logically about your storage containers and then also um you know sassing them up to basically suit your style um and then you know you organizing everything in, in a file system so that you can see everything very very clearly which enables you to very easily maintain that type of a system um so you know when i get containers i actually have another room off of this room that is that's my next project i'm going to tackle that next so it's kind of like where everything that isn't pretty organized goes and so basically i have um you know like a bag like this and it's full of boxes that and this this is not going to go anywhere because this sparks joy for me if i feel like organizing something I know I have a bag of boxes down here that I can come and raid and I am sure to find the perfect box. I'm also a true believer and everything happens for a reason. So if you feel a true necessity to keep something, it's probably because you need it. And let me revise that because, you know, I had a, so a colleague of mine one time said, well, everything sparks joy for me. How I can't get rid of anything, but if you really hone in to that feeling of what truly sparks joy for you and you can kind of, you can key in on that, you'll get it. You'll, you'll start to understand it. So it's something you have to fine tune it. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. It's just like practice. It's, it's basically practicing. Um, so I certainly do throw out boxes. There are boxes that I throw out, but there are some that I keep because I know, you know what, this is a good, this is a nice, good square box. Like this is one, for instance, a L'Occitane box. This has a nice height to it. So I think this will, it'll fit somewhere. You know, I could put tea bags in here. I could put um, lipsticks in here. I could put eyeshadows in here and I can stack them where it's not too high. They're not gonna get lost in there they'll fit just perfectly. So um, I have this little box and I do I do keep these. This is another cute cutie pie. I was not throwing this box out. You guys know how much I love pink and polka dots. So, and gold, and gold. So this, again, this is a really cute box. When some of my boxes get cruddy upstairs, um, I don't usually temp paper them. I was gonna you know, show you guys that, but um, I'll usually just toss them and then find another box in my in my bag of goodies and replace them. So, you know, soap boxes, like I keep a lot of this kind of stuff. 
and some I can use them for two containers. I mean, I could do bracelets in here. I could do, I, I mean, there's a million things that you could do. So I like to keep those, um, those little kind of boxes to, to create extra storage. So one other, th oh, and let me flip you around here. I don't know if everybody that's watching has seen this, but I, I did this china cabinet for this basement. And basically this is gonna hold like a lot of my craft supplies. So here's another, um, you know, different use for different storage containers. Like this, these are file folder boxes to hold files. Um, mine is holding gift bags. So these just so happen to fit perfectly in here. Um, and then they tuck away, they're organized. These are my small little gift bags. So these fit in here and they just fit perfectly in here. So, you know, this is a basket and this houses all of my tissue paper, which again is organized standing vertically so that I can see everything very, very clearly. When I need a piece of tissue paper, I can just come there and, and pull out the color that I need. Um, you know, this is my canister baubles, my bling canister. So this has all kinds of, you know, beads and blings and extra knobs that I have laying around if I need it for a project. This totally sparks joy for me. What am I ever going to use it for? I don't know. I use it to make things pretty. When I'm wrapping a gift, I throw a little extra bling on it. Um, or I might, you know, here's something I used. I, I found I needed a way to hang my gift bags. So I, this was just a wooden dowel and I, I glued a little knob on the top of it just to make it look pretty. So again, it's all about keeping in your life things that spark joy for you. This cabinet sparks so much joy for me. <laughs> so every, I don't necessarily like doing laundry. Does anybody else like doing laundry? Am I alone in this? Um, I don't really like doing laundry, but you can bet your bottom dollar that I have done more laundry in the last month than I probably have in the last year because I love coming down here and spending time and it's just so fun to just throw in a load of laundry and, and dabble for a few minutes and it's it's just a wonderful thing. So it, I believe, I truly believe that making things beautiful in your life, it will make you more productive and it will make you hone in on you know, your life's purpose, basically. So I think, you know, in I say this a lot in the beginning when I first started this company, and even now during this pandemic, I have felt a little bit guilty because I'm not doing something that's super meaningful. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. Um, you know, I'm not an electrician or a plumber that's, you know, helping people maintain their homes. I just make things pretty. I teach people how to paint furniture. But at the end of the day, I truly believe that it, it makes us better people when we can create beauty around our lives and it puts us at ease. It kind of, um, it creates a sense of calm and peace and accomplishment. And that's something that it's, you know, it's, it's, you can't always get that. So I, it is important. I think what we're doing here at Sweet Pieces to kind of keep everybody sane and, um, you know, and, and help people be creative and really discover your style and who you are and, and how you want your home to be. So um, I hope this kind of helped. I hope it helped to kind of spark some ideas, spark some joy in your life, get you on the path of, of organizing. Um, I just wanted to show you quickly a couple things that I grabbed while I was at the shop that I thought would be really fun for organizing. So um, again, a lot of this stuff is available on the website, so you can definitely take a peek up on the website. Um, just click, go to sweetpieces.com and then click on, um, home decor. There is, um, all kinds of goodies up there. So here's, here's one. So th these are jelly bags. These have been so hot. We've been selling these like hotcakes, but th I thought this was a really good idea. So let me grab something. Hold on. Um, if you wanted to, you had, um, let's say, what is this called? Wrapping paper. That word totally escaped my brain. <laughs> um, if you had wrapping paper, this would be a really cute way. So I love this bag. I love yellow, but I don't know. Do I need it? 
where am I going to put it? What am I going to use it for? Like I always think of this stuff, how can I use it to store something? So this could be a really great thing. You could literally just stand it up on the floor and just have all your wrapping papers in it. That's one thing. I mean, another great idea one of our team members had, Jill, was that she was going to use this as a produce bag to go to the grocery store and put all of her produce in. So again, you don't necessarily have to use something for its like its original intention. You can kind of reimagine it a little bit, and that's what we're all about at Sweet Pieces. This is a vase, and I'm using it as a brush holder. It sparked joy for me. I absolutely love it. It's pink and gold and polka dot, but I had absolutely no use for it. I knew I would figure out where to use it someday, and now it holds all of my brushes. So I come down here and it sparks joy for me. And again, that's what it's all about. Everything in my life sparks joy for me. If it doesn't spark joy, it's gotta get out. So my husband is lucky that he still sparks joy for me. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, here's another couple of really cute things. So these are uh, planters. These are available on the website and they're black and white. I love them. I love anything black and white, black, white, pink, turquoise, my favorite colors. Um, but this could be something that you hold um, paintbrushes in, or this could be something that you put makeup brushes in. Um, again, you don't necessarily have to use it as a planter. You can use it as something else, which is what we love doing at Sweet Pieces. Here's another one. So we have a couple different um, patterns available. We also have some really cute, I might have to buy this for myself. I just love it so much. So this is a jewelry box, a jeweled jewelry box. And this is also available on the website, but it's so pretty. It's got this giant bling on the top of it. I just absolutely love it. So this could be a jewelry box. It could be a tea box. What if you put all your tea bags in here? How much more would you love drinking tea, something that is healthy for you, if every time you went and grabbed a tea bag, it came out of this box? So that's what you have to think of. You know, that's the other thing that you have to think of is if you want to get into healthy habits, go organize your kitchen. Um, you know, put your intention, put your actions behind your intention. So if you intend on getting healthy, um, then go take a look at what you have in your kitchen and get yourself organized. So here's another jewelry box that we have. This one has a giant gold bling at the top of it, like a stone, and it's mirrored and it's got some gold flecks in it and it's, it's a cute little one. So again, I mean, this could be a jewelry box, but it could be anything. It could house crayons. Like, do you love crayons? Do you love coloring? Like they have all these adult coloring books now. Um, like how much more would you do that activity if they were in a pretty little box like this? So definitely think outside the box. We also have, t I was at the store earlier today, we have tons of vintage containers. So urns and vases and all kinds of things. And sometimes you see those things and they're so beautiful and you're like, what am I going to do with it? But you could easily use it as a storage container. So it, I truly believe if something sparks joy for you, you love it. You should have it and you have to figure out a way to use it. Um, so I grabbed this, this was one like a little toolbox and I thought this could be another way you could store your gift bags in something like this. If you have like a little gift wrapping area, um, you could put gift bags into a storage box. Um, we, so here's one last thing. This is a welcome home box and this is um, actually a craft that we did at a Pinterest class. And this is like a 24 inch box that it can be a centerpiece. Um, just take this out, trays. I also love trays. I have a couple of trays on my nightstand where I put my rings at night um, or you know, a, a hand lotion, whatever. They kind of keep, keep it organized. So those are also available on the website. But this is a, a centerpiece box, so you can put pretty much anything in here. You could do like faux flowers on the table. You could do condiments in here. You could do tea bags. You could do sauce packets, like whatever you want to do. But basically, I'm thinking about launching this as a kit. So what do you guys think? I need to hear your comments. Is this something that you would be interested in if we sold it on the website as a kit? So if so, just chime in for me, give me a, a yes or a no, 
on the centerpiece box, let me know in the comments and I will keep you guys updated. Um, so that is my organizing segment. So I absolutely love, love, love organizing. I am kind of addicted to it. Every time I see a storage container, my heart jumps a little bit. Is anybody else with me on that? And, but it has kind of, I never thought it was meaningful, but as I have become more organized, it has helped me to become more productive. Because I think that our brain can kind, it can only have so much in it at one time. You can only be thinking, I think they say like seven things. You can only be thinking of seven things at one time. So if you can take some of those things out and give them a space of their own, then you don't have to think about them anymore. And that is how I feel then that you can kind of expand and you can start to be more productive and do more things and learn different things if your house is in order, um, literally. So I think it's really important. I think that, uh, you know, what does the Bible say? Cleanliness is godliness. So I think it, it is important, but I do want to tell you that if you feel that you are a messy or unorganized person, I promise that there is hope for you. But the first thing that you have to do is you have to believe, you have to believe that it is possible to change and you have to want to change and then you have to work at it. You have to practice. Um, and little by little I have practiced and, and organizing has start to become a second nature for me. And I truly do look at things, you know, systematically, like how am I going to store this? How is it going to go? Um, you know, I have my little, my vinyl area here now that I've been cutting a lot of vinyls for you guys. And I have this paper cutter that I have out literally all the time. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Well, I just stuck a little hook on the inside of this cabinet. And now it lives in here. And it just, it stays on the inside of the cabinet and it's easy peasy. So you have to really think of things um, logically and you'll get there little by little and it's fun. It's really fun to do it. So thank you so much for joining me today. I've enjoyed my time with you. I love talking about organizing and I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you are staying positive. That's so important. Make sure that you are turning off the news for some hours every day because it can make you crazy. If you just continue to watch the news, I encourage you to go learn something new. Um, you know, dive into something that you've been wanting to do for years, learn a new language. I mean, literally the world is at our fingertips right now. We live in this age of instant gratification and everything is available to us. So anything that you want to learn how to do, you can very, very easily key into that. So if you want to learn something that maybe Sweet Pieces can teach you, you should tune in on Thursday at two o'clock because we're going to be doing a segment, a Q&A segment, another Q&A. Um, so we are asking for your questions. So if you submit a question to us, we are going to give you a coupon for 10% off your next purchase. And we're gonna ask your question live on air. And you can ask me anything you want. So you can ask me about business, you can ask me about my life, you can ask me about organizing, about DIY, about our paint products. Um, you can ask me what I ate for breakfast. I'll tell you, I had an egg sandwich. My husband cooked it for me. It was delicious. <laughs> so please tune in on Thursday. And I just want to thank you guys so much for all of your support. Um, we, you know, we're a small business and this has been really hard for us. It's really jarring um, to have to completely change. I'm now having to put together a plan because when Governor Cuomo asks for the plan of how we're going to reopen, I'm sure I'm going to have to submit it to him. And I'm really having to kind of rethink our whole entire workplace. And it's really kind of a crazy thing. So I, I really, really appreciate each and every one of you that have reached out to us and, um, you know, purchased from us or continued to support us, you know, sent up a note, a note of gratitude, you know, showing us your projects. It's really keeping us going and we so, so appreciate it. And we hope that we've been a little bit of a light for you guys um, to kind of get through this, this really, really challenging time. So thank you so much. I think I had one question. Let me just really quick take a peek. Where did I get the lamp from a basement? It has the turquoise color shade in the orb bottom. 
Target, Target, 19 dollars That's how much the lamp was. And then I bought the shade. I think I might have got the shade, I don't know, maybe Home Goods or something like that. Um, I found them separately. Again, I carry measurements with me everywhere I go. So I use the Notes app in my phone. And if I'm in the house and I'm organized something, I'm organizing something, or I have a lamp, and I know, oh, I need a new shade for this, and it needs to be 12 inches high, I just type that note into my phone, and then it's always there. So anywhere I go and I'm shopping, I have that information on me. Same thing with my shelf. Like when I built that closet with all the shelves in it, I measured those shelves, I, I put a little note, I had a little diagram in there so I knew exactly the size. So when I went to the store, I, and I always have my little sweet pieces measuring tape on my keychain, I hope you guys have one too. Um, I, you know, I can measure the baskets and see exactly what was gonna fit in there perfectly. So it's never, um, I believe that everything happens for a reason. And like, I tend to, people, people say to me, it just seems like everything just falls in your lap. And it, that is not how it happened. <laughs> I, I put it out into the universe. I talk about it and what I want and, and how I'm going to get it. And then God decides how he's going to give it to me. But um, I'm putting it out there. He knows that I'm, I'm, I'm asking for it. So you got to do that. It's important. So you got to prepare. you got to make sure you're prepared. Um, but then, you know, happy accidents do happen. They do tend to happen. So I'll give you one quick story before we go. I... Um, for my daughter's first birthday, I threw her a Wonderland party in Alice in Wonderland. And so I had to find um, trunks, tree trunks that were a certain diameter and a certain height so that I could attach tissue paper to the top of them and make them look like mushrooms. Okay? It's pretty ridiculous, right? So I. Uh, I planned this party and then like a storm happened so it was it was so ridiculous and this storm knocked down trees and I'm driving around the neighborhood one day and it just so happens that these guys are cutting up this tree that had exactly the right diameter that I needed and the height for these mushrooms <laughs> and you better bet I loaded them right into my car and I drove them home and but I knew I knew it would come I knew it would come. I didn't know how I was going to get them. And I think it was probably like three days before the party. So I put it out there. I planned for it. I didn't necessarily have everything I needed, but I knew that God was going to provide. <laughs> he even provides party supplies. <laughs> so I'm telling you people, anything that you need, you just need to ask. And then you need to believe that it's yours. Um, so that is the Daily Talk, the Daily Talk with Amanda. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I will see you guys on Thursday at 2 o'clock to answer all of your questions, your burning questions about DIY and everything else. I hope you guys stay safe, stay positive during that time, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for watching. Want to learn more? Subscribe now.